Heard you before, I won't tell you Blue Big blue and I came in the bins I got a Drake and a couple of fins Slid on bad to four with the twins Told you before, I won't tell you Dang. Look like dough what I'm selling dope. My niece watch Coco Melon Honey K on the road, go bezel Ice. Nigga ain't know no better Niggas gon' broke <laughs> What's going on, man? It's your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are back with the industry's most wanted podcast. Okay. Say it with me. This is my dog over here. This is my brother right here, man. Shout out to Big Blue Jay. Me and this guy have been through some name changes. A lot of All that, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you talk right there. you go. I want to make sure they hear you good. Um, but, hey, it ain't, my, it ain't my job to introduce you. You got to do that. <laughs> it's Big Blue. Y'all already know me. Infamous the team. Shout out all my dogs, Day Skill, YBA Coot, Trap, Nizo. We in the building. Nah, for real, man. Like, and you know the thing about we have a lot of history. We go back even further than the current situation, right? right? You know, um, you know, I was at one time I was doing a lot of work with. Shout out Smooth ATL, you know, and Smooth. and that's how you and I really connected was right. during that era, that that phase of my life. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, shout out to Smooth, man. Still Smooth. love you, bro. Um, man. Where are you from originally? I am from, well, I was born in Jacksonville, North Carolina. My dad is was in the military, so I'm a military brat. Okay. But my my core, my where I come from is California. Mm, yes, we did talk about that. So we're going to take it back there. Is that cool? That's fine. Because I want to know and I want the people to understand before music was your passion. Like, let's take it all the way back. Mm. As a youngin, did you aspire to do something different before music? Oh uh, yeah, I liked. Uh, I was in the sports in middle school. Okay. Uh, not too much in high school because I was kind of bad. Got kicked, <laughs> you got was kicked acting out up. In ninth grade, so <laughs> not too much in high school. And then when I got to high school too, like I'm, I'm a little dude. You know, I'm kind of skinny. Were really. you fast though? Uh, I I thought so. <laughs> but I guess back then, he was dusting them. When I got back, when I got on the court and on the field with them, I just realized that that wasn't for me. So yeah, I had to go find something else. Absolutely, you know that's the thing about life is along your journey, you're gonna attempt to do some stuff that you may enjoy, but you're like, nah, this ain't it. Right? Nah, this ain't it. Like, hey, I I, I attempted to go to college and I did about two months, and I said, nah, this ain't for me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's like, like me. God bless the ones who got all them degrees and stuff, you know, but it's like, I don't know. I just, it just wasn't for me. Like, I just right. have that natural mental hustler Hustle mentality. Guy. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? So right. we, we like to figure stuff out on our own. Right. <laughs> do the hard, the hard way sometimes, but hey. Right. We appreciate it, though. Yeah, it worked out for us. Big facts, man. So would you say growing up in Cali had an influence on you for wanting to do music? Oh uh, yeah, well you know, the Tupacs and the the Snoops and yeah, you know some um, of the greatest some ever. Some of the greatest that ever did it ever come from out of there. But and really slick, but I would not pop because obviously he passed. But Snoop's still out here doing major things. Oh uh, yeah, he's a big dog. He the biggest dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I would say I didn't really take my sound from there, but music, I definitely that's probably where I started at. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that because Cali definitely has a sound of its own. Right. You hear a, an artist from out there, like you can slick tell. And I think that people say that about the East Coast, which I don't know, like Atlanta is such a melting pot, I guess, that I don't necessarily think you can tell if an artist is from Atlanta, maybe like the right. Migos or something like that, you know, because right. of their flow. But Cali just has a very distinct sound and right. i love it you know what i'm saying because like okay we know where they from they from the west coast right did you work with any artists while you was out there oh uh, yeah i worked with a couple artists they not really on i did open up for uh, joe moses he was signed to brit squad okay um uh, and we opened up for yg this is way Man. way way back in the day <laughs> this is when he was running around with uh dj mustard reen riches like dudes like that ty dollar sign yeah all of them was a group at first and then you know, they branched off and got their deals and stuff. So we opened up for them, but that's probably pretty much it. What was those experiences like, you know, being able to open up for some other artists that were, you know, really out there making moves? Just get you the exposure. Yeah. Because, um, of course, they crowds are going to be bigger than yours because nobody knows you. And, right. And they, they're getting known. So it just gives you the exposure and to know how to feed off the crowd and to know what to do when you're performing because it ain't just getting up there and rapping. 
Like, that's that's not a performance. Nobody, they can go home and listen to you if they wanted to do that. Right, absolutely. Would you say that, you know, being in that particular moment, like being on a stage, being in front of a crowd, gave you confirmation that you was doing the right thing? Yeah, definitely do. Because especially, you know, going to open mics and things like that, you got to understand all the artists, they there because they want to put their music out. That's right. And so if, if you can get a head nod, if you can get a, anything from one of them, because they not there for you. They there for themselves. That's so the you can best get place to test it them, out. You know, that, <laughs> you know you're doing your job. So that's where I first got the confidence, like, okay, I'm doing something. They like to hear this. So. Right. And that's why it's so important to do, like, those type of events and stuff. Because, one, it helps build your stage presence. And, two, um, it's a great place to test out new music. Definitely. Like you said, if you get a few little head nods and if they ain't just sitting here playing <laughs> in their phones, but they actually paying attention, you know you're doing something right. 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 <laughs> um, from the time you started doing music until now, you know, again, I, I've been hearing your music for years now. And I've definitely, definitely have heard the elevation, the growth. You know Appreciate what I'm saying? It. He got his, ooh. <laughs> he got ooh. His, ooh. <laughs> Trust me, I hear your music all the time. You know, Dave's room, his, his studio is right across from my home podcast studio, and I be hearing it in there all the time. Appreciate that, Skill. Yeah, skill, hey, Skills be playing y'all's music back to back to back. I'll tell him sometimes, like, I don't heard that song 30 <laughs> times a day. That's my dog. <laughs> um, you know, talk to us about that elevation. You know, how important was it to you to really, like, develop your sound uh it just it wasn't even really that i was trying to develop a sound it was just i was just wanting to be in the studio all the time right like sometimes i'll just be in the studio i'm not even recording i'm just watching industry's most wanted catching I'm a vibe a million dollars worth of game you know different things just to get something to talk about because sometimes my life is stagnant yeah you know i'm Understood. not famous i ain't rich so i ain't catching pjs and going to Puerto Rico every week. So, you know, I get some of my, what I want to talk about in my feed from y'all's podcast. So, yeah. you know. Shout out to my dog, Gilly. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, man, just <laughs> just being in the studio, period. Like, that's just, that's my comfort zone. Absolutely. Because it's, it's a creative space for you. Right. And I totally get that because, you know, whether it's here now or at ARC, there were times I didn't necessarily have work to do, but I just want to be here just because right. it just feels right. You right. know what I'm saying? And it motivates you. Yeah. You know, that's your creative space, a place for you to come up with new ideas. Speaking of which, you know, let's talk about your music. And, you know, we, we have a definitely a new banger, a, a new banger. The biggest one. He ain't, he don't put nothing but hits out, y'all. I tell Dave all the time, there's no cap. Dave will tell you, I tell him all the time how dope I think you are. I appreciate it. I really think you're such a dope artist. And that's not because you're my bro, not because, you know, you Dave's partner. I think you're such a dope artist. And I just want to give you flowers right now while you're right here. I appreciate it. Sis. Yeah, man. Big facts. Um, you know, let's talk about, you know, let's talk about your creative style a little bit. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think there's artists out here who would hear your music and how you deliver it. And they'd be like, man, I would wish I could do that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> give them a little tip. Uh, my go-to, I tell everybody I just need a little bit of gas. <laughs> the good gas. Some some fruit snacks. <laughs> and, you uh, and Dave uh, on them Ari doggone fruit snacks. In Arizona. <laughs> uh, and I don't know what it is. It's just, that's. That's the formula? Yeah, that's just my formula. And I just go off of whatever the beat. It's like the beat talks to me. Yeah. And I just feel like my voice is kind of like an instrument. It definitely is. So, and it, yeah. Yeah. I'm really just trying to add to the beat. Right. You know, and that's 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 basically my formula. What I'm going through, you know, what the people around me is going through with my family, you know, my friends, the people that I care about. Uh, long live Rick. You man, know, long live our, um, our brother Rick, man. We miss him so much. Yeah, I just try and put everything, everything about me into the music because yeah. I, I don't have, you know, anywhere else another platform to do that at so i do it through my music i can give you everything through my music yeah where do you want to go with this music business <sighs> i mean what do you aspire to do because and, and i ask that because and i know it can potentially change right. right so i'll elaborate a little bit you know um i study the people that i aspire to be like for example i, I tune in to like the breakfast club because i aspire to be at that level one day right. gilly the kid's my brother man i've known him for years you know and, and he's got his podcast that's 
booming now. I aspire to be at that level one day. You know right. what I'm saying? So, um, you know, with that being said, you know, talk to us about, like, you know, your inspiration and things like that. I just, I inspire to have that number one record. Like, yeah. I just know that I got it in me. I listen to the people that have number one records. I compare. I contrast. Put everything. And I feel like I got, I'm the full package. I can put all of that. So, that's my goal, to get that number one record. I ain't going to be satisfied until I get it. So that's that's where my goal is as far as song-wise. We need a plaque on the wall. But as far as, <laughs> as, far as like, label-wise, I just want to stamp us, like, I want us to be stamped in the city like QC stamped in the city. Absolutely, because how long have you been out in Atlanta now? <sighs> oh, man, I've been out here since middle school so it's been about 20 years See, it's so been off and on this is home for you right, slick right, right. you know dave is from out here i know coop has been here for a very very long time right. same thing with trap with so you guys you know you're owed that right right you know when you pay your dues what you guys have you've been we working hard we definitely paid them <laughs> over overtime <laughs> a whole lot of overtime man um you guys have done some collaborative projects together Nope. Which has been really dope. Got another one coming. Talk. To, can you tell us about anything about it? Uh, I ain't. We ain't started working on. It. He actually just hit me up last night on um, Coop Music. You know, Coop brother. He did the project with Skills. It's yes. out right now. Um, and he contacted me last night. Said he wanted to work. I told him I'm ready. Man, that way you'll have a like a full EP produced right. by him. Yep. And he's a fire producer, man. Yeah, we've been trying to get him out the cut for years, but he just <laughs> wouldn't come. But I think he finally, he finally caught on. He's yes. like, yeah, let me tap in. Yeah, because he's been over to our house a few times, and him and Dave just locked in and created. And I'm just like, man, I love to see people in their creative element. Yeah, he bring that 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 beat maker, that producer out of day too. So right. we really be trying to get them together to do that. But, you know, schedules and time, but we're going to make it happen. Yeah, Dave be in there doing his little thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know music is your passion. Right, right. Would you say that your passion and your purpose in life are one and the same, or are they different? To a, to a certain extent. Yeah. Um. I think my purpose, well, I, th I think I'm still finding out what my purpose is. Yeah. Um, but I think this music is definitely my passion. Yeah. But I think more of like just being a, a great father, a great dad. Like yeah. That, I think that's really my purpose. Yeah. You know. Um, and to help other people too. Right. right. I think that, I, I just think that I, I, I can be great at that. Yeah, I put it with my time into everything else, and I can be great at that. And I feel like being a father is the most important thing to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. It means the most to me. So I think that that's, that's really my, at the end of the day, I would just want everybody to know me as a great dad. Yeah. And, you know, baby girl going to remember that forever. Right. They say a little girl's first love is her dad. I hope so. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, and, and, and I think vice versa. I think, you know, you all know my son just got married. And it's funny because a lot of people that meet her say, wow, she really reminds me of you. Mm -hmm. They say that boys sometimes will date women or marry women that reminds them of their mother. Yeah, that's right. You know, so, yeah, being there for your daughter is, is like the biggest thing ever. And you're a great important. father. I see it. I see you posting about it all the time. And I, I love that you do that because you have to make time. No matter what we got going on in this world, got to make time for baby girl. And we got a lot, but I'm always going to make time for it. <laughs> what can we expect coming up from you? Um, you know, you got this new record out, you know, before we check it out and everything. What else can we expect coming up from you? Um, like I just said, me and Cool Music, we about to work. We working on an EP. We about to get in the studio, start working on an EP. Um, me and Kona, we already started working on our EP. Uh, so that'll be coming soon. Me and Coop, we still <laughs> we we still coming out with that blue coop. We just trying to get everything together. Uh, he just hit me up about that yesterday, so we putting that together. Me and Trap, we got our EP that we working on. It's done. We just gotta put the finishing touches on that. Me and Skills EP is already <laughs> out right now. We about to double back and get y'all another one. And uh, yeah, that that title is one of my favorite songs ever. 
Oh yeah, we still gonna shoot the video. Y'all for gotta that shoot too. a video for that, bro. We still shooting a video for that. I can listen to that song over and over because both the way y'all came together on that record is so fire. And, and he he came up with the whole concept. I just kind of put the words in it because how skills he just come in, he start mumbling stuff, and then I don't I just understand. Catch on to it yes. and I just go from there. So <laughs> that's pretty much how he. He's definitely got the the creative mind frame for the for the records. Yeah, he definitely has that creative mind. Let let's talk about your creative process though. You know a little bit. Um, you know, cause like okay, for example, when Dave creates and you've heard it, he'll literally mumble it first just to get the melody. Right. And then once he has the melody, then he'll put words to it. Right. How does your music come together? I just kind of do it in my head. I break it down like bar by bar, but I I come up with it in my head. Just so, like, okay, sound right, and then I then I go to the mic and I actually do it, yeah. So I can hear it because sometimes what sounds right in your head, your you don't have the right <laughs> voice for it. <laughs> and so I might try and do something, and be like, nah, nah, that's not this, it. This ain't it. Let me go back to the drawing board. So that's pretty much how I do it. I I freestyle in my head, and then I go to the mic and I lay. Well, you know, I think that for example, the record title you stepped outside of your comfort zone per se on that. Right. You got slightly melodic on there. You you did something totally different that I haven't heard you do before on that song. And I think that's what I like so much about it because I was like, okay, Blue Jay did his thing on this record. You Blue get what Jay. I'm saying? Like you you gotta do that. You gotta exp like you said, your voice is an instrument, right? Right. You gotta experiment with it. Right. That's why and that's another reason why I like being in the studio alone a lot. Like Yes. Because when you got other people, you know, your girl, anybody, your homies, whoever you you like and you like to be around, you 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 um what you you take their opinion it matters of and course so, and so when you're in there being creative some a lot of times you're gonna do funny things with your voice and <laughs> you're gonna do ad libs that they're gonna kind of look, look at, at you, you crazy like, what you got going on <laughs> but that's why I like being in the studio and I ain't gotta worry about none of that and if I am in the studio with people I don't look at them at all while I'm recording it becomes a distraction yeah like I, I let them be behind me and I'm like this until I get done. We could listen to the record together, but I'm not finna be looking at y'all and, you know, letting y'all deter me from what I'm trying to do. <laughs> no, nah, I, I respect that. That's like when I do my interviews, I tell them, I'm like, please don't bring more than like two people because it becomes a distraction. Right. If, if they sitting over there and you got a gang of people, they're going to be paying attention to what's going on over there and it, it becomes a distraction. It's no different than you being in the studio. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I've been in the studio a couple times a day. Most part, I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm over here. <laughs> I'll catch you when you come out. I'll right. see you about two in the morning. Right. <laughs> Meet you upstairs. <laughs> um, let's talk about that as well. Are you you're creating your own space, uh, studio space? Yeah, I just, uh, top of the year, I just went by the studio uh, with the building. I yeah. bought the building. And now I'm just putting, you know, getting electricity, all that stuff. Yeah, just it takes do, time. Yeah, so I'm trying to get it done. I'm trying to be up and running by, like, the summertime. Oh, that's great. Um, but, yeah, that was that was something that I wanted to invest in. I think that we all need infamous, the labels who I'm talking about, but we all needed our own space. A hundred percent. So that we could just be creative when we ready to be creative. A hundred percent. We ain't got to wait on nobody. And I – um, I'm glad that everybody do. Trap got his own studio. Coop got his own studio. Day got his own studio. I got my own studio. It's important because y'all are four grown men. Right. Y'all can't be battling <laughs> over who in the studio today. Right. We ain't got time for all that. And we done ran a couple of times. <laughs> Dave be like, I got a session. I'll be like, man, I'm already in here. <laughs> you like, you're going to have to go. I'll, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you have it this time. Right. And you don't want to have to, because you could be in your element at right. that time. And you're like, dang, I got to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think it's important when you are a creator, you got to have your own creative space. All right. That's the that's the best investment, especially if you're going to be doing music. That's the best investment. It's a money maker. That you can make. Facts. You don't want to be paying these studio fees, I'm telling you. Woo, Lord, no, because out here in Atlanta, Atlanta. They some of them like 120, 130 an hour. Right. And if you do want to pay them, we got a studio. I mean, so, that's cool. You know, come on, that, pay them. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? But think about if you're trying to lock in for six, eight hours, like, bro, it can it, it can be expensive. So why not invest that and have your own spot? Right. Even if it's just for recording and then you send the mix and master out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I do. Yeah, absolutely. Send it, <laughs> send it straight today with that payment. <laughs> Don't forget the payment. <laughs> um who would be a dream collab for you? 
Uh, Lucci, that's my I, free my brother, that's man. My dog. That's who I want to do a song with. Free him. Hopefully he be coming home soon. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's that's my that's my go to if I wanted to get a feature. He 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 on the top of the list. He definitely one of the dopest doing it, and he's a good dude, man. Yeah. Like just all around, he's he's super solid. If you could share the stage with somebody, who would it be? Would it be somebody different that you could pipe up the stage with? Who would that be? You know who I want to perform with? <laughs> Busta Rhymes. Because, like, his energy is just crazy. Yes. And so, like, his performances was crazy. Like, I don't know if y'all remember He's, back in the day. Oh, I do, because I'm an OG. Busta serious back then. So, like, <laughs> I think he one of the best performers, like, rap-wise. Yes ever to touch the stage i think because he's just different he kind of like i th- i think missy elliot missy elliot's kind of a female version of him mm-hmm. like she was kind of always a little over the top with you know certain ways she looked and same thing with him but that's what i love about them because you got to be yourself unapologetically right and they, they super creative you can even go look back at their videos they exactly there's never been videos that can't even to this day there's never been videos that look like missy elliott video that look like Buster Rhymes. Period. Videos. Like they did their thing back then. Man. Shout out Hype Williams. <laughs> that was a great era. And I love what's out now. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like I'm so glad I got to experience that era of music as well. Yeah, I'm definitely glad. You know, um, you know, let's talk about, you know, other business ventures because we cannot just do this, right? Right. Besides being a dope artist, what other in what other things interest you business wise? <sighs> I don't really, I don't know. I don't really like to do nothing else. This is, <laughs> this is really like, don't get me wrong. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do all of that, what I got to do to survive. And, you know, but when it comes to like really having free time and what I want to dedicate my time to, to besides my daughter, like this is, this is it for me. Like yeah. This, so. It's like, it's good. this has got to work. Right. This I ain't got no Backup plan plans or none of that. <laughs> so. Most definitely. But I mean, you could also because you've been doing this for so long. But you, I do, I do want, I do want to get an artist. Like that's my that that's, was what that's I was my like, number one thing. Right. Like, you know, once I'm done doing my music, or not even I ain't even gotta be done, but that's one thing. I wanna bring somebody, a young dude, you know, still a teenager that you know, he liked to rap. And just really show him the ropes because we we been through it, you know. And you ain't got to You don't have to go through all the hardships that we had to go through. We can show you the ropes. So really, that's my goal to get somewhere financially where, and be successful enough where I can give that to somebody else and show them the game, and they don't have to go through all the ups and downs that we had to go through, and really just show them what success looked like. You think about. All the, I'm probably most of the dope artists out there who have seen success or are continuing to see success, they have their own artists. Right. You mentioned Lucci. Lucci has his own movement, YFN, and he's got artists under YFN. Right. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Boom Man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Gucci. <laughs> Gucci. Sh- shout out to a lot of these, you know, it's business moguls out here. You know, Master P is one of my faves because he's such a business mogul. He does so many different things, and he's put so many artists in a position to win. So you could absolutely do that. Yes, ma'am. Most definitely. What would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned in this business? Uh, just... Stay humble, you know, don't let, you know, the numbers fool you. Don't let, you know, you getting a little bit of money fool you. Just just be who you are at the core yeah. no matter what. You know, don't, don't change up. Stay solid. Stay humble. Remember where you came from, you know, because you can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so true. We've you know, seen it happen to some yeah, people. Just stay humble and help help as many people as you can because this game ain't easy it's a hard game to be in yeah and so you know that's that's pretty much it and you all have to be patient because it takes a long time we've been rapping since we was in ninth grade you know and i ain't gonna tell you how old we (laughs) is but 
<laughs> We've been rapping since they, we was they, in They young, you know. <laughs> they young. I tell Dave, though, I think he, like, way older than he claims to be because he's got such an old soul. Yeah, super like, mature guy. <laughs> <laughs> he is a super mature guy. <laughs> That's my dog. Uh, what tell tell everybody one thing about you that they don't know, whether it's something personal or whatever. What is it that you don't mind sharing? Because you know fans want to know this kind of stuff. They'd be like, I never knew that about Big Blue Jay. That um, we know you're a father. All right. Uh, what, what's your favorite food? Can he uh, cook? Lamb. lamb. <laughs> she said. Lamb chops. That's my favorite. <laughs> that's my go-to. Lamb chops. I knew she was going to be honest. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. You know, that's what I, that's what I like. <laughs> I'm going to cook her son tonight. You feel me? She over there hating, but I'm going to cook her son tonight. Put her on game. <laughs> See, I bet you that's something people didn't know about you. Oh, yeah. I definitely cook, but. I cleaned up my Instagram, but if y'all would have been with me a, a little while ago, I used to be on there. I'm, I'm a low-key chef. Hey, we had to all do that. I used to have so much junk on my Instagram. And Big is like, babe, you got to take all that stuff down, clean it up. Yeah, that was skills be like, blue. This is ridiculous. Ain't nobody finna look at all that. that. And that's true. And I never really thought about it that way. There was a point in time where I had like over 10,000 posts on my Instagram because I used to post – every day multiple right. times a day right. but i would never take any of it down <laughs> it was just cluttered and sp stacking up you know what i'm saying <laughs> so he's a chef chef, chef blue chef blue <laughs> most definitely um talk to us about the song that's out right now told you before it's exactly what the name is i i done told you before i ain't gonna tell you again um I don't even really know how the beat just it just talked to me when I went to the studio that night. I knew I needed a record. Uh, I hadn't came out with a record for a little while. Uh, I had ran into some legal issues and things like that, and I just wanted to get. I wanted to start the new year off right, but those legal issues caused me not to be able to do that. Understood. And so this was my this was my this jump start for the new year. So. It was a told you before track. Who produced it? Oh, Phantom. Phantom produced it. Dope, dope. How long did it take you to come up with the record? Mm, about 20 minutes. How do y'all do that <laughs> so quick? It like, just, my mind don't work that fast. I, I mean, maybe with writing lyrics it doesn't. I don't know. But right. how do y'all come up with your music so fast? It just never stops coming. Like, it just, once, once you lay something... Like especially when if I lay a good hook, the verse the verse is the easy part. Yeah, the hook is like the hardest part, uh, cause that's really what you reel them in with. Right, that's and, what people remember the most. Right, and so the verses is that's that's A B C to me, but the hook is the hardest because I really want to grasp everybody's attention with that. Right, and so after I lay the hook, the the rest of the song is five ten minutes. I'm out of there. <laughs> <laughs> but the hook sometimes it'll it it have me a little stagnant a little bit because I just I think I over like I'm over evaluating it you know so it's just like but yeah once I get the hook out it's five ten minutes I'm done that's just human nature like I I I overthink everything not so much anymore but that was one of my biggest flaws I would overthink and analyze everything and make it into something that it wasn't right and I think <laughs> I think sometimes like things like that's that a woman is, thing though right. <laughs> Things like that is what make you know that I'm supposed to be doing this. Nah, for because real. Because how quick I can do a song. And like Dave, he got this thing where he'll rap the whole song and then he'll erase it. And he done memorized the whole song from the, from him rapping it the first time. And it's just, that's a gift. I can't even do that. I wish he remembered other stuff like that. No, we ain't going into that. <laughs> we ain't going into that. It's called STS, Short Term Shot. He better be putting that new TV up. I'm just saying. Dave, get it up, man. <laughs> I told him by the time I get home, we bought a new TV today for the bedroom. I said it better be mounted by the time I get home. Mount it up. <laughs> I, it ain't sitting in the box up against the wall for two weeks. We ain't we ain't doing all that. We don't do those. <laughs> uh, before we get up out of here, a couple things we need to do. One, tell everybody where they follow you, keep up with you on your social media. Big Blue Jay, 
on Instagram, Big Blue J on Twitter. Not doing Facebook no more. I'm done with Facebook. <laughs> People keep trying to hack me on there. I keep getting these notifications that yeah. people are trying to log in my account and stuff. Every time I post something on Facebook, they keep talking about the community. This goes against the community. God, standard. Like, they too sensitive. Who is the community? Right. That's, that's, that's who I want to know. Who's the community? Right. My community loves my post. <laughs> I don't know what y'all talking about. Right. <laughs> so everything uh, Big Blue Jay. Yes, ma'am. Most definitely. Who you want to shout out to? Uh, shout out my boy Dave Skills, of course, YBA Coop. Nizo, Trap, Long Live Rick, Long Live PKO. My boy Peasy just came home. I've been saying free him. The last couple interviews I did, he came home. So shout out my boy Peasy, man. That's a blessing. That's a blessing right there. Uh, Last but not least, we live on the Industry's Most Wanted podcast with my bro, man. Shout out Big Blue Jay in the building. Biggest. The biggest. You dig? With my sis. Tell everybody what makes you the Industry's Most Wanted. Because I'm what the industry needs. I'm the full package. I'm everything. So that's what makes me the industry most wanted. You dig? We about to get up out of here, y'all. Appreciate y'all.